Hello, everybody. You have tuned in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm your host, First Sergeant Rich Myers with the Indiana State Police Public Information Office. We would like to thank you for tuning in to watch our show. We want to thank Tom Trial, our man behind the scenes that puts us on YouTube each and every week. And, of course, we want to thank our sponsors, the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance. And I have with me today a first-time guest, the Attorney General for the Indiana, uh, for Indiana, Attorney General Greg Zoller. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's great to be here. Well, it's wonderful to have you here. I'm first-time guest, and we appreciate you being here and, and talking with us about a very important thing that's been happening, probably more than we know, especially with the uh, bad weather that we've had, one of those things. But we're going to talk about scams. And I know you guys deal in scams a lot there at the Attorney General's office. We get a lot of calls on them. But uh, we're kind of going to talk about uh, one of the scams that's going around a little bit more because of the uh, storms that we had. And that's kind of the home repair scams. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you seen that start up here with the spring oh, weather? Is. Every time we have, you know, big weather storm come through, we have the storm chasers that come after it. And it's people that say that they're here to fix your roof. I mean, they can look up and see that you've got roof damage. So they'll go into neighborhoods. We've seen uh, large numbers of them. Uh, now, there's two problems. One, some of the problems with the original uh, roof itself. So we've got consumers complaining about the uh, the contractor that put on the roof. Maybe they used the wrong kind of shingle. Uh, but then it's the repair, and those are often uh, the fly-by-night people that come through and say that we're in the neighborhood and we'll be glad to fix your roof. Right, and, and they uh, promise to uh, give you a, a, a service and then either – back out take your money and back out or gone or a service that's not up to par to what it should be that's right and it usually comes with a a hurry up kind of pitch we're in the neighborhood we've got shingles that would match uh we're working on some of your neighbors so we can give you a deal but you have to you have to agree right now so you don't have an opportunity to look are they bonded uh does the better business bureau have a rating uh, does my office have other complaints so if they don't have uh, some local connection remember uh, you're taking your uh, a higher risk because these are the people that run through town and you won't be able to find them if things go badly and it's kind of those key words that you're talking about that we uh recommend to watch out for on any type of scam uh this is a one-time deal this is only going to be good till the end of the week or for right now and i've got this left over from another job and i need to get rid of it so kind of those key words that you're looking for uh when you're talking about any kind of scam well we call it the red flags and it, usually it starts with them coming to you Okay. Uh, if you know you've got roof damage, you should be doing your own homework. Uh, check out a company that's reputable. Uh, make sure they're bonded and insured. Uh, but also check to see if they've got other complaints with my office, the Better Business Bureau, uh, and that they're local. Uh, you want to be able to have some reputable company that has a reputation uh, that live in town or at least close. Uh, the ones that show up and knock on your door, remember, uh, you did not call them. They came to you. Yeah. Well, again, I have Attorney General uh, Greg Zeller, Zeller, or Zeller, 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 with me with the uh, Indiana Attorney General's office, and and I I failed to ask you before before we got actually into our meat of this, but how did you become uh, the Attorney General for Indiana? Where did that come from? Well, you know, I come from New Albany, so I'm originally a part of the Zeller family. Of uh, it's it, the Fuzzy Zeller, the golfer. Yeah. So it's a great big German Catholic family down on the river. Uh, but I went to. Um, Purdue in computer science and IU Law School. I worked for Quayle in the Senate uh, okay. years ago, right out of law school. And then in the White House, I came back to Indiana uh, with a new wife and uh, uh, raised a family. Uh, I was in the I was the head of the World Trade Center up until 9-11. Okay. Uh, so uh, that was the end of that uh, career path. Uh, and then I started working as a chief deputy for then Attorney General Steve Carter, right. uh, who'd been a friend of mine in law school and knew that I'd run offices in government. Uh, I really fell in love with the job uh, and working with, we now have over 150 lawyers, but it's a great big law firm. Uh, and I really enjoyed both the practice of law and the clients. We represent the citizens as consumers, Correct. but also state government. We, we represent our right. troopers. Uh, so uh, it's really been something that I've uh, enjoyed uh, and I'm now in my second term, uh, finishing up at the end of this year. So it's it's been really uh, a great opportunity to serve the the people of the state uh, in a really special way. Rewarding career. Oh, absolutely. I uh, rewarding in the uh, 
let's say, in the honor of it. Yeah. I don't know I'm the highest paid lawyer in the state, <laughs> but, uh, but all that aside. <laughs> well, we appreciate what you do for the state sure. of Indiana. And again, we appreciate you being here and talking about uh, this uh, topic of scams that we're talking about. The the uh, scam that we were on a while ago about the um, uh, come along and do the repairs on your house scam, is this very common in Indiana? Does that happen quite a bit? You know, a- after every storm, I was on... Uh, um, channel six yesterday they had just gone out and seen um, a whole neighborhood where they had roof damage so again that was really about the original construction and whether there were uh, violations of the warranty Uh, so that's one thing to look for if you've got a 30-year warranty uh, for a new roof that you've put on with the right kind of shingles uh, you have that as your uh, let's say your guarantee Uh, but if they won't honor the guarantee it would be um, something that my office would bring in action. Okay. You don't have to necessarily go out and hire a lawyer. Uh, that would be a consumer violation. And there's a lot of things like that. If it's um, if it's something that affects a neighborhood, see, we'll probably be involved in that because it's a larger incident. But uh, a lot of times we'll work with separate individuals and do what we consider mediation. We contact the uh, the company. Uh, ask very politely if they wouldn't like to just work this out. So right. we don't often have to go to court. Uh, we have other ways of encouraging, yeah. let's say, fair treatment of consumers. Now, I know you have an office in the state office building or in the state house here. Do you have offices throughout Indiana also? We do. Uh, a lot of that uh, deals with some of the travel to courts. Right. So we, we represent the state in all 92 counties. Uh, we also have Medicaid fraud, which is a a state federal program so we have offices with that uh, but there's at least uh, six other offices throughout the state not very large uh, but they they avoid the travel up to lake county for instance we have a office up there uh, near fort wayne so major populations where we're going to be in court uh, we found that having someone up there is more economical than driving back and forth and spending a day on the road yeah, and that's going to be uh, also more convenient for the person that wanted to talk to you to be able to go to that location. Absolutely. No, I, and I, a lot of the work we do is now online, so we encourage the, the amount of consumer complaints has really driven us to uh, a web-based right. uh, approach. Uh, we do still take phone calls. Um, not many people come in to visit us, but uh, we're, we're pretty um, open and accessible, but the volume alone in consumer protection is really staggering. Well, again, I'm speaking with uh, Attorney General Greg Zeller from the uh, Indiana Attorney General's office, and uh, we're talking about scams. And the probably one of the most that we get complaints about, and and I know you guys is the IRS scam, and that's probably rearing its ugly head this time of the year. It is, and um, you know, it comes with the threat of jail. Right. Uh, so they call, and you've you've missed payment on some tax that you'd forgotten about or never heard of. Uh, and the threat that you're going to go to jail. Now, first of all, uh, I'd point out to the listeners, the IRS doesn't call you. So, I mean, there's your first clue. Uh, and remember, They're not that friendly, uh, are they? <laughs> no, I, I, I recognize the fear of the IRS, but but they don't call. Yeah. I mean, that, that's just a fact. You'll get plenty of letters, uh, and you may get... Um, you may get other things, but uh, it won't be a phone call and they won't ever threaten, you know, prison. Uh, but that's probably the number one uh, complaint. Now, it doesn't mean it's necessarily the, the most egregious, but uh, the, not a lot of people lose money to it because I think after they get over that initial shock, they realize it's a scam. Right. Uh, but it's uh, it's pretty prevalent. And uh, we can, again, uh, tell people, you know, don't use any kind of uh don't fall prey to these people. Uh, make sure that you contact the attorney general's office if you have any questions. And we also want to put out, and let's put this out now, you have a great website uh, mm-hmm. with all kinds of information on it because I've been on there myself to do research through my job, and you have information on scams and, and Medicare fraud and all that. So can we have your address there? Sure. It's indianaconsumer.com, uh, and it's really what we call the, the tools in the toolbox. Uh, so if you spend a few minutes and just kind of peruse uh, the consumer side of this, uh, how to avoid identity theft, uh, the most frequent scams, Uh, You can sign up for a a fraud alert. So if we see a new one, uh, some of them are fairly interesting. So people kind of enjoy hearing about it. But again, if you're educated as to what the scam is, uh, you're much less likely to be uh, 
fall prey to the the scam artist. So you're actually, if you sign up for that, you're going to be notified if a new scam comes out. And it's not all that often, but it's maybe every other week or so we'll find something that, you know, uh, Indiana is usually not the uh, original source of a scam. We'll see it from coast to coast. Uh, one of our colleagues, another attorney general, sometimes the Federal Com uh, Trade Commission, uh, other law enforcement, they'll contact us and say, right. be on guard for this new scam. And we'll put out a notice that kind of explains it a little bit so people do have that kind of extra protection of knowledge. Do you find that a lot of these originate from other countries even? Absolutely. Uh, I think some of that is just because the long arm of the law, uh, they're protected. I can't sue somebody in Jamaica. Uh, yeah. I've tried. I'm, I'm still trying, <laughs> but uh, apparently that's the home of a lot of these uh, uh, if you've won a, a contest, uh, a yeah. lot of times those seem to have originated in uh, Jamaica. We still haven't seen any prizes. We've just seen the scams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, we can talk about that also because a lot of people are asked to send money in to win a contest, and that should be one of your red flags you talk about. Absolutely. Uh, you'll never be asked uh, to pay a fee or pay the taxes in advance. Uh, any of the legitimate... Uh, sweepstakes or prizes uh, it's prohibited to do that uh, and and they won't uh, they won't call you uh, they literally will send material or they show up the, I mean right. the the real publishers clearinghouse uh, they, they do show, show up with stuff. balloons I mean yeah. it's the whole picture like you see they want to get the press out of it also a absolutely but um, it, it is the number one scam in terms of the lost money and so opposite the uh, the fear of the IRS now you have that hope against hope uh, yeah. that you now have almost a miracle that mm -hmm. you've won a contest that you don't even remember applying for so uh, but it, it really uh, preys off of people's best hopes and wishes and by the time you start talking to someone again they won't call you so i recommend just hang up uh, don't try to engage a conversation uh, because again uh, it's kind of like the con man the confidence they gain right. from a conversation uh, i tell people the power vested in me as attorney general i can just tell you to hang up it's not being rude because they've already broken the law do you find that they try and prey a lot on uh, the elderly Absolutely. I was down at the uh, Sojourners meeting at the um, uh, Methodist home down in Franklin uh, last night. Uh, and these are people all in their uh, 70s and 80s, uh, all served in the military. Uh, they've got a nest egg that they're right. living off of. They may have a monthly income, a fixed income, a Social Security and other um, let's say, retirement assets. So they've got this nest egg, and they're home. Uh, they're vulnerable uh, because of that. And the other thing is that they were taught from a very young age to be polite. Correct. I mean, yeah. Hoosiers are by yeah. nature polite, and they're easily brought into a conversation. So I'm trying to educate, you know, if they call you and you don't know them, you don't have to be on the phone with them. And Please yeah. just hang up. And that I have my own 96 year old uh, grandma that I try and steal in that and bless her heart. She's just so kind. And, but I think if the people watch out for them and to watch their, their bank accounts, yeah. that, that needs to be done, doesn't it? No, there has to be a little bit of, uh, let's say, uh, protection against uh, someone's own vulnerabilities. And you, you have to kind of gauge that. But we've seen it over and over where people will send checks. Uh, you know, the check has a lot of information yeah. on the bottom of it that really shouldn't go to people you don't know. Uh, but also uh, people that will give credit card information over the phone. Yeah. Uh, so it's really sad to see uh, the number of the elderly. We, we went to uh, the legislature and got a new statute two years ago, a Senior Consumer Protection Act. Uh, that I can ask for treble damages against people who uh, target uh, the elderly uh, to go after. Well, great. Well, we're down to our last 30 seconds here, but I want to thank you for coming in and being our guest today. You've really helped us out with this scam. And, and I think the uh, what we can say, which will cover everything, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Absolutely. No, and, and the idea that they come to you, that ought to be the first red flag. And again, if you have any questions, the Attorney General site is wonderful with information at, at uh, Attorney General uh, Greg Zeller. Thank you for being here with us oh, it's today. It's great to be with you. Again, listen to the Roadshow. Thanks for tuning in. Roadshow out.